child embodies our ultimate vision that every Filipino learner will realize their full potential and ultimately reach their biggest dreams, no matter how high, no matter how hard, through quality education. And as our learners aim to soar, we must continue to elevate our goals. Rising, the kite is our emblem of aspiration to deliver the brand of quality in Philippine basic education. The quadrants of the soaring kite symbolize the key reform areas in forwarding this cause. As we embark on this aggressive reform to yield upskilled teachers, well-developed curriculum, improved learning environment, and responsive multi-stakeholder cooperation. Using the colors of our flag, the logo symbolizes our unity and serves as a reminder that it takes a nation to educate a child. Together, we as a nation will have to move forward and gain more momentum so that our vision of quality basic education for all shall take flight. Sama-sama sa pagsulong ng edukalidad. Hello, Mrs. Morgan. Remember how hard it was to get your students' attention? Oh, Mr. Jeski, any explosive ideas? And you, Mr. Fisher, the world keeps turning, right? OK, we're past all that, because now we have Microsoft Educator Center. Trainings, courses, webinars, programs, badges, points, certificates. Join now and get yourself ready for the new school year. Teach your best. Nang samiklab ang kiyara sa Marawi, maraming buhay at kabuhayan ang nawala. Maraming kabahayan at paaralan ang napinsala. Sa kabila ng matinding suliranin, naging matagumpay ang DepEd na mabigyan ang mga mag-aaral ng pagkakataong ipagpatuloy ang edukasyon at muling bumangon sa sitwasyon. Habang naghihintay sa pagkumpuni at pagsasaayos ng mga paaralan, nagkaloob ang DepEd ng mga temporary learning shelters, remedial classes, learning kits, at feeding programs para sa mga displaced learners. Nabigla ang lahat sa pag-alboruto ng Bulkang Taal. Libo-libong pamilya Kabilang ang mga guro at mag-aaral ang nawalan ng tirahan at mga ari-arian. Mabilis ang naging tugon ng DepEd upang makapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral ang mga apektadong mag-aaral. Sinikap ng mga guro na turuan ang mga mag-aaral na pansamantalang tumuloy sa evacuation center. Tumama sa bansa ang COVID-19 pandemic, dahilan upang maantala ang normal na dalay ng pamumuhay at trabaho sa lahat ng sektor, kabilang na ang kagawaran ng edukasyon. Nang ipatupad ang Luzon Lockdown, inilunsad ang Dapid Commons upang tuloy ang pagkatuto ng mga learners habang nasa bahay. 
Sa kabila ng mabigat na hamon sa ilalim ng new normal, patuloy na nagpunyagi ang DepEd upang maghanap at maghatid ng mga alternatibong pamamaraan upang magpatuloy ang edukasyon sa pinakaligtas at pinakaangkop na paraan. Sa ilalim ng Learning Continuity Plan, layunin ng DepEd na magpatuloy ang edukasyon ng hindi na kompromiso ang kapakanan at kalusugan ng mga guro at mag-aaral. Isusulong ng DepEd ang tatlong pangunahing layunin ang COP na proteksyon, kaugnay ng mga health standards at safety protocols para sa ligtas na school year, patuloy na edukasyon sa pamamagitan ng blended learning, distance learning at homeschooling na angkop sa kapasidad ng bawat mag-aaral at mabisang aksyon sa pakikipagtulungan sa lokal na pamahalaan at mga partner organizations upang maihatid ang dekalidad ng edukasyon para sa lahat. Bawat DepEd Division ay bumuo rin ng sarili nilang Learning Continuity Plan upang gabayan ang mga guro, mga magulang at mga mag-aaral sa bagong pamamaraan ng pag-aaral gamit ang online, modular at TV and radio-based instructions. Gamit ang iba't ibang learning modalities, nagdaos ng dry run ang mga paaralan sa iba't ibang bahagi ng bansa. Katuwang ang mga local government units at mga education partners upang maging handa sa bagong sistema ng edukasyon. Isinagawa rin ang mga pagsasanay at orientasyon sa mga magulang upang maging epektibong katuwang sa pag-aaral ng kanilang mga anak. Sa anumang hamon o sitwasyon, handa ang DepEd. Handang kumilos, handang tumugon, at handang magserbisyo. Ang dami ng mga pagsusubok at challenges ang naharap at napagtagumpayan ng ating Department of Education. Tuwing may pagsusubok, priority palagi natin ang ating learners at ang ating mga teachers sa tulong ng parents at saka partners at ang buong bansa. Ngayon, sa hinaharap natin itong new normal na sinasabi nila, matatag ang ating kagawaran, matatag ang DepEd, dahil pinagtibay na tayo ng panahon, kayang-kaya natin ito sa tulong ninyo. G'day everyone, I'm Mark. As a teacher and a former principal, I know that professional learning often comes at the end of a very long day. But there are exciting, less structured ways to be in the driver's seat of your own lifelong learning. A great place to start is by engaging with our Microsoft Innovative Educator or MIE community. This global community is big, in fact, it's enormous. Our MIEs love connecting. Monthly tweet meets are global gatherings of inspiring educators around big topics and their Facebook group acts as a persistent home for discussions and shared activities. Another way teachers are learning within communities is through Microsoft Teams. Now, greater teacher collaboration improves teaching across schools and Teams is the ultimate platform for a professional learning community. It's open-walled and socially embedded, so you can incorporate your OneNote staff notebook PLC and have access to all the goodness of video chat, phone, and collaboration tools. With Immersive Reader built in, it's inclusive and accessible on any device. Your learning community is just a click away. Last tip, our Microsoft Education Center offers great ways to gain new skills with courses tailored uniquely to your needs. Make it a collaborative experience by picking a MEC course to do together with your peers. And as a bonus, you can practice collaborative learning by exploring a research paper like the class of 2030, and treat it just like a book club with your colleagues face-to-face -face or in teams. The link to that research, it's in the description. Remember, learning is socially embedded. It's best done together for students and for teachers. Happy learning. Year 
2020 brought new beginnings for the Department of Education. Ready to pivot towards attaining quality education, DepEd was hopeful of the challenges ahead of it. But as DepEd continued to work on its commitment, the world suddenly faced a steeper dilemma. Around the globe, countries like the Philippines had to shift their priorities to respond to a public health crisis brought by COVID-19. Schools had to be closed, activities had to be halted, graduation ceremonies had to be cancelled, as people were urged to stay at home. A new normal dawned upon us. As soon as TEPED realized the impact of these disruptions in education, it began to proactively craft its learning continuity plan last April to ensure that learning opportunities will still be available. Consulting with partners and advisors through the Education Forum, as well as legislators, teachers, parents, learners, and the general public, DepEd made sure its LCP encompasses the concerns of the whole education sector in responding to the crisis. Its topmost priority being the protection of the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel. To make informed decisions, DepEd first analyzed relevant data and epidemiological picture for the incoming school year. DepEd also issued guidelines on its required health standards to be adopted in all public and private schools and DepEd offices following DOH and IATF protocols. It covers four COVID-19 mitigation objectives, namely, to increase physical and mental resilience, reduce transmission, reduce contact, and reduce duration of infection. The LCP also outlined how learning continuity will be ensured. It streamlines the K-12 curriculum into the most essential learning competencies and allows the use of distance learning, homeschooling, and blended learning modalities. Since conducting face-to-face -face classes will be a risk in most areas, DepEd has anchored its delivery of education to modular, online, TV and radio, or a combination of all. Guided by teachers, modular learning will allow learners to use self-learning modules in a format applicable to learners' capacity. In online distance learning, teachers will facilitate and engage learners' participation through the internet, whether synchronous or asynchronous. TV and radio-based instructions, on the other hand, are converted lessons fit for the broadcast medium. The LCP assures that all our learners, including our SPED, ALS, Madrasa students, can still access education even within the confines of their homes, and ensures that their household capacity will not hinder their right to education. To make this possible, our joint Brigada Escuela and Oplan Balik Escuela is assisting the preparations for the rollout of the LCP. On May 8, the LCP was approved by the IATF. The President also gave it his full support and expressed his commitment to meeting the financial demands of its execution. The implementation of the LCP will not be easy. It is not a perfect plan and complications can be expected along the way. But extraordinary times call for extraordinary and proactive measures. And the Department of Education is ready to address the challenges along the way with the help of our national and local government, partners, parents, and learners. As one nation, learning opportunities shall be available in this brave new world for our Filipino children. When you need the focus to be on you and not whatever that guy's doing, open teams.
Subukan mo! Tutal na wasak na naman namin ang lahat ng ari-arian nyo! Sa totoong buhay, totoo ang pinsala ng gyera. Mula noon hanggang ngayon. Para limitahan ang kalupitan ng gyera, nagkaisa ang mga bansa pitumpung taon na ang nakalipas upang itaguyod ang Geneva Conventions. Ang Geneva Conventions ay kinikilala ng buong mundo bilang bahagi ng International Humanitarian Law na nagtatakda ng mga patakaran ng gyera o the rules of war. Ayon dito, Huwag gawing target ang mga sibilyan at kanilang mga ari-arian. Tratuhin sa makataong paraan ang mga nabilanggo at protektahan ang mga doktor, nurse at mga ospital para paglingkuran ang mga sugatan at may sakit saan man panig sila nagmula. Alamin ang Geneva Conventions. Bisitahin ang www.therulesofwar.org. Hi guys, so I just came from a meeting and I was just told that I would be leading this fundraising concert for International Students Day. And I have to present the plan to the school board next week. Ah! Okay, I'm going to need some help. Let me create a team space and invite my dream team. Sia, she knows all about the budgeting and stuff. Ivan, he knows all the kids from the performing arts group. Aisha, she worked on getting sponsorship last year. And Sam, because he's so cute. Let me lay out all tasks in planner and kick things off. So, I'm almost done with my event concept and inspiration board. I just need Ivan to do some final tweaks and plug in the repertoire. Budget from Zia? Check. Sponsorship plan? Check. Done! Whew! When you start using Microsoft Teams, teamwork really does become easier. So now I'm heading over to present the plan to the school board. Wish me luck! De Luna. Present! Herrera. Present! Valera. Present! Handa ba tayo sa school year 2020? Ngayong taon, ang edukasyon tuloy pa rin. Sa tulong ng DepEd, mga guro at mga magulang, ang hanggang isip, handa bukas. Tuloy-tuloy ang pag-aaral. May mga modules para sa iba't ibang antas. Sa Government TV, maging sa radyo. Mahalagang ligtas ang ating mga estudyante at guro. Kaya kahit nasa bahay, tuloy ang edukasyon. Kung tulong-tulong, may paraan, may aralan. Hanggang isip, handa buka. Bisitahin ang DepEd Philippines sa Facebook at ang deped.gov.ph. If you spend more time tracking down files than actually working on them, open teams. Handa ka na bang magpabakuna? Narito ang mga paalala at hakbang na gagawin sa proseso ng pagbabakuna. Bago ang pagbabakuna, kinakailangan mo nang dumaan sa pre-vaccination screening. Kinakailangan kumuha muna ng medical clearance sa doktor ang mga kabilang sa special population tulad ng mga sumusunod. May autoimmune disease. May cancer. May HIV. Sumasa ilalim sa transplant operation. Kasalukuyang umiinom ng steroids. Mga pasyenteng may taning na ang buhay dahil sa karamdaman o nakaratay na lang sa kama o bahay. Kapag ikaw ay nabigyan na ng medical clearance mula sa iyong doktor, narito ang mga dapat gawin bago ang araw ng iyong pagbabakuna. 1. Humingi ng schedule at lugar kung saan ka magpapabakuna sa iyong pinakamalapit na barangay health center. 2. Huwag kalimutan dali ng iyong government ID, proof of comorbidity o medical clearance, pati na ang face mask, face shield at hand sanitizer. Sa araw ng pagbabakuna, narito ang mga steps na dapat sundin. 
Step 1. Waiting area. Siguraduhin kayo ay pumunta sa tamang oras at petsa ng inyong schedule sa pagbabakuna. Hindi papayagan ng mga walk-in sa vaccination sites. Maupo sa bakanting upuan alin sunod sa tamang pagkakasunod na bilang. Hintayin na tawagin kayo para sa susunod na hakbang. Habang nag-aantay, sumunod sa minimum public health standards. Isuot ang face mask at face shield, sundin ang proper physical distancing at ugaliing maghugas at isanitize ang kamay. Step 2. Registration. Sundin ng mga patakaran ng inyong LGU o vaccination site sa pag-register at ipakita ang inyong government ID. Bibigyan kayo ng kopya ng informed consent form, health screening form at mga pamphlet tungkol sa bakuna na pwede ninyong basahin. Hintayin na matapos ang proseso ng registration bago pumunta sa susunod na hakbang. Step 3. Screening Kayo ay isa sa ilalim sa health screening at tatanungin tungkol sa inyong kalusugan tulad ng History of COVID-19 Exposure History of Vaccination Mga gamot na iniinom Kung may allergies at iba pa Ito ay para makasiguro kung angkop para sa inyo ang magpabakuna sa kasalukuyan. Step 4. Health Education Makinig sa ibabahaging importanteng impormasyon tungkol sa pagbabakuna para sa COVID-19. Kung mayroon pa kayong ibang katanungan, sumangguni sa ating mga vaccination staff. Siguraduhing napirmahan ng consent form na pumapayag kayong magpabakuna bago pumunta sa susunod na hakbang. Step 5. Vaccine Administration Ito ang panahon kung saan kayo ay babakunahan sa loob ng isa o dalawang minuto. Huwag kalimutan na kunin ang inyong vaccination card pagkatapos matanggap ang bakuna. Step 6. Observation Alin sunod sa Department of Health, ang lahat na magpapabakuna ay kailangan manatili sa pasilidad ng 15 hanggang 30 minuto para obserbahan kung may hindi magandang nararamdaman. Ang ating medical staff ay nakatutok sa inyo para ma-monitor ang inyong kalusugan. Bibigyan kayo ng mga pangalan ng health facility o hotline kung saan pwedeng pumunta kung kinakailangan sumangguni dahil sa side effects ng bakuna. Pagkatapos ng pagbabakuna, huwag kalimutang gawin ang mga sumusunod. 1. Itanong ang mga nais mong malaman tungkol sa vaccine na binigay sa iyo. 2. Huwag kalimutan ang iyong vaccination card. 3. Alamin ang petsa ng second dose ng iyong pagbabakuna. 4. Kunin ang contact number o alamin kung sino ang dapat tawagan kung sakali mang ikaw ay nakadarama ng seryosong side effects. Narito rin ang ibang mga paalala na dapat tandaan. Siguraduhin bumalik sa schedule para sa pangalawang dose ng bakuna. Laging tatandaan na kahit nabakunahan ka na, ay huwag pa rin kalimutan sumunod sa minimum public health standards tulad ng pagsasanitize ng mga kamay, pagsusuot ng face mask at face shield, at pagdistansya sa iba ng isang metro. Magmask, hugas, iwas, airflow. Ito ay para na rin sa ating proteksyon at sa proteksyon ng iba. Narito ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga eligible population na target mabakunahan. Para sa karagdagang impormasyon, bisitahin ang mga sumusunod na pages. Facebook, Official DOH Gov. Twitter, at DOH Gov PH. Website, doh.gov.ph. Tara na sa Bida Bakunation! The COVID-19 pandemic has brought unprecedented changes to our usual ways of living. But the Department of Education remains unfazed by these challenges to fulfill the mission of Sulong Edo Kalidad. The rallying call for national effort to deliver quality basic education to all Filipinos, which involved aggressive reforms in the four key areas. K-12 Curriculum Review and Update, Improving the Learning Environment, Teachers of Skilling and Reskilling, and Engagement of Stakeholders for Support and Collaboration to move forward together as we prepare the education system for the future. The call for Sulong Edukalidad will continue and we have built the framework of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan or the BELCP to put the needs of the learners at top priority. DEPED's BELCP is the major response and commitment to protect the health, safety, and well-being of learners, teachers, and personnel. The plan aims to provide opportunities to continue education even in these trying times with a BELCP in place 
supported by unprecedented number of diverse stakeholders from the academe, media, industry groups, NGOs, business and private individuals, Sulong Edukaridad will be able to sustain the aims in its reform for quality basic education. In our journey towards quality education, we have established the four pillars of aggressive reforms from the start, and we have been continuing to progress in these pillars. In improving the learning environment, we took action in the construction and rehabilitation of school buildings, ensured the availability of learning materials and equipment, and prioritized our last mile schools. The challenges of the pandemic also brought to light the urgent need to upgrade our ICT infrastructure to service the needs of education. In terms of the teachers of skilling and reskilling, we were able to establish more innovative professional standards for teachers and school heads. We have aligned the professional development of teachers with their career progression to track their development as part of the National Educators Academy of the Philippines Transformation. With the launch of the Education Features Program, where we will be focusing on innovative actions and solutions to improve the state of our education, we are now more than ready to start a new journey and continue our fight for quality education for all Filipino learners. Finally, we've given high importance to the engagement of stakeholders for support and collaboration. In support of this, we have convened the Philippine Forum for Accessible Quality Basic Education or the Education Forum, which will leverage other partnerships for education quality and strengthen partnership with the Philippine Normal University as the country's national center for teacher education. The department has also been developing a professional development program for teachers and school leaders in order to equip them with the skills, materials, and data that will allow them to help their students prepare for PISA 2022. This intervention consists of the following components. Online training for teachers and school leaders, development of learning materials and practice tests for students, deepening the analysis of the PISA 2018 results, supporting school-level action research. Now that the year is about to end, our commitment to Sulong Edukalidad will continue and will be far from being gone. With a lot at stake, considering our new knowledge and experience from this year's challenges, we are equipped to face a new future. As we head on to the future where we will face many challenges and uncertainties, the department will always be the guardian of every Filipino learner's right to education. Sino ba ang hindi naapektuhan? Sino ba ang hindi nag-alala? Sino ba ang hindi nalito? Lahat tayo ay naapektuhan. Lahat tayo ay nag-aalala. Lahat tayo ay nalito. Dahil binago ng pandemyang dulot ng COVID-19, ang paraan ng paumuhay ng lahat ng mga Pilipino saan mang sektor ka nabibilang. Tumigil ang panandalian ang ating mga nakagawian. Tumigil ang lahat ng uri ng transaksyon. Tumigil ang lahat ng operasyon ng mga paaralan. Nakalilito. Nakakaba. Paano na ang kinabukasan ng mga kabataan? Paano na tayo sa hinaharap? Opisyal na inilulunsad ng kagawaran ng edukasyon sa paunguna ng Office of the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction ang DepEd Teaches. Ito ay isang online na programa na gagabay sa mga guro, tagapangasiwa, magulang 
at mag-aaral hinggil sa mga pagbabago sa batayang edukasyon ngayong new normal. Ang DepEd Teaches ay angkla sa sulong edukalidad na nakatuon sa apat na pangunahing pangailangan ng mapunyaging reforma, tungo sa makalidad na pagtuturo at pagkatuto. Una, pagre-review at pagsasapanahon ng kurikulum ng K-12. Ikalawa, pagpapaunlad ng kapaligiran pampagkatuto. Ikatlo, paglinang ng mga bagong kasanayan sa mga guro. At ang ikaapat, ang paikipag-ugnay sa mga stakeholder para sa suporta at kolaborasyon. Sa pamagitan ng virtual learning platform, ang DepEd Teaches ang magsisilbing bukas na komunidad ng pagsasanay na titipon sa mga guro, tagapamunong pang-edukasyon at sa sino mang may pagnanain sa pagtataguyod ng kalidad na edukasyon sa bansa at sa pagtagumpay ng bawat Pilipinong mag-aaral. Ang mga official, education specialist, learning content expert at outstanding teacher ng DepEd ang magiging tagapanayam na magbabahagi ng kanilang kaalaman at kasanayan sa kurikulum, pagtuturo at pagkatuto, pagtataya at lahat ng kaugnay na mahalaga sa proseso ng pagtuturo at pagkatuto sa new normal. Bilang mga frontliner ng classroom, inaasahang magiging aktibo ang mga guro sa programang ito. Ang mga tema at paksa ay ang kop sa kanilang pangangailangan at konteksto sa pamamagitan ng accessible na platform, ang social media. Sumali na sa OUCI Family sa DepEd Teaches kung sama-sama mapahuhusay pa ang mga guro, kung sama-sama higit na malilinang natin ang mga mag-aaral. As we welcome the month of July, we welcome as well the rainy season. We hope you and your loved ones are in good health and are doing well. You know, they say that rain is the nature's way of rejuvenating itself. Wish it could have some or same effect on us and we are just simply happy during the rainy season and let the kid inside us remind us to be constantly curious about life and enjoy new things as we invite you again for today's episode of Deped Teaches for a wonderful learning experience. By spending your beautiful afternoon here in Deped Teaches coupled with a cup of coffee or tea, it's a perfect way to enjoy this weather. To all our viewers in our social media accounts, namely the DepEd Philippines Facebook page, the DepEd Tayo, DepEd YouTube channel, and big shout out to all DepEd Teachers Facebook followers. If you have not clicked the like and follow button of DepEd Teachers, uh, you are missing some part of your life. But kidding aside, we would really appreciate if you will be part of this growing community. So don't forget to visit the DepEd Teachers Facebook page and visit all the past episodes there anytime, anywhere. Good afternoon, Ma'am Anna. How's everything? And what is in store for us today? Hello, everyone. So good afternoon, Sir July. So let's buckle up for a new episode of DepEd Teachers, the one and only online community made to provide support and professional development to teachers to equip you in the teaching and learning process in the new normal. Whether you're a teacher, learning facilitator, tutor, or support staff, you are sure to learn new pieces of information and strategies when you consistently watch and listen to DEPA Teaches. You know, since episode 25, our theme is centered around instructional planning, delivery, and assessment. And today, we're taking an in-depth look at planning and implementing developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process for distance delivery modalities. You know, as we can see, the keyword here is developmentally sequenced instruction. 
Now, let me ask my co-host, Sir July, what is your rough idea in today's topic? What comes to my mind when we say developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process? Uh, I think uh, about order of the activities that keeps learners engaged in the content and purposely scaffolds learners towards achieving the lesson's objective by maximizing the allotted class time. In other words, it's about the order of planned and well-thought-out activities. I wonder what possible challenges or difficulties do our teachers encounter in this area of planning developmentally sequenced lessons, especially in our pandemic time? You know, that's a good question. Being organized and putting things in order requires us to polish the plan. Like, you have to consider every detail of it just to ensure that it's aligned with the curriculum, the content is relevant to the context of our learners. But probably some teachers, they need further clarification since we have different learning delivery modalities, just like what you said, and they want to know more on how they can plot the activities, selecting the appropriate tasks, and allocating the right amount of instructional time. And maybe what other considerations to make when we talk about developmentally sequenced instruction. But I guess, Sir July, the best person to answer this is none other than our invited resource speaker today. I couldn't agree more, Ma'am Anna, and I'm excited to listen to our resource speaker today. But before we ring the curtain up for this live presentation, let's play a game first while waiting for other viewers to join us. Similar to our activity last week, we will have another vocabulary activity where you need to complete the statement with an appropriate idiom that matches the picture to be given. So the picture will serve as the clue and the statement is of course related to our practice. Again, you have 30 seconds for each question and we will pose four questions and we hope you see uh, to see your responses in the live comment section of our Facebook pages. All right, so let's begin. So again, we encourage you to join us in the short activity. Can we show now question number one? Okay, so you have to guess the idiomatic expression. Okay, so let me read the statement. Through developmentally sequenced lessons, we help our learners blank. Again, through developmentally sequenced le lessons, we help our learners Blank. Okay, so the clue is shown based on the picture. You have 30 seconds now. All right, okay, so let's reveal the answer, please. Okay, so the correct answer is through developmentally sequenced lessons, we can help our learners to climb up the ladder. Okay, so, you know, the ladder represents progress. Climbing up the ladder means becoming more and more successful. And this is possible you know, we help our teach we help our students climb up the ladder or reaching the standards. Okay. So I hope you were able to guess the correct idiom. Okay. To I hope you got it correctly. That was a good start, Mamana. I also hope that our viewers easily got the correct answer in this item. Now for our second question or item, please show the question. When we plan a developmentally sequenced lesson, we won't be blank. Again, when we plan a developmentally sequenced lesson, we won't be blank. So you have the clue there in the picture. And 30 seconds start now.
Okay, so we can now show or reveal the correct answer. So just to complete the sentence, when we have a developmentally sequenced lesson, we won't be racing against the clock or racing against the time. Were you able to guess the correct answer, viewers? Okay, clock here symbolizes time, which is limited resource that must be used wisely. We wouldn't want our learners to race against time to learn new things, only in a short amount of time. When we have planned our lesson accordingly, we wouldn't need to race against the clock or rush things for our learners because we did our planning very well. Right. Okay, so that was an excellent item. Okay, so planning is the key. Now, let's show third question. Our third question, please. Okay, so we expect our learners to blank when we provide developmentally sequence instruction. Okay, so you have to guess the correct idiomatic expression. We expect our learners to blank when we provide developmentally sequence instruction. You have 30 seconds now to write or type in the correct answer. Okay, so let's reveal the answer. What do you think, dear viewers? Okay, so the correct answer is to act their age or to act one's age. So let me read again. We expect our learners to act their age when we provide developmentally sequenced instruction. Of course, when we create our lesson, we expect our learners to behave more mature or more responsibly especially when we come up with an age-appropriate lesson. So in a developmentally sequenced lesson, we also consider the level of understanding and readiness of our students. So at one's age. I think that was a tricky item, Mam Anna, <laughs> but the picture captured the answer vividly. So let's now have our last item. Kindly flash the question on our screen. Designing a developmentally sequenced instruction means you keep your lessons in a blank. Again, designing a developmentally sequenced instruction means you keep your lessons in a blank. So you have there the clue being shown. So dear viewers, 30 seconds start now. All right, time's up now. Let us show them the correct answer. So designing a developmentally sequenced instruction means you keep your lesson in an apple pie order. So the answer here, the idiom for this item is apple pie order. So keeping your lessons in an apple pie order means that uh, it is a very good organized in order and in general regardless of our profession we want things in order 
for learning to be successful, we put things or we put everything in an apple pie order. Okay, so let's have a short recap of the idioms that we learned today. Here are the following idioms. Climb up the ladder. Race against the clock or time. Act one's age. And apple pie order. Notice the words ladder, clock, age, and order symbolize sequence or development. And these words are the key terms related to the concept and ideas for today's episode. And in today's presentation, we will learn more about planning developmentally sequenced lessons from our esteemed resource person. With great pride and honor, we are here to introduce to you our speaker, Director Arturo B. Bayohot, regarded by many as a leader, scholar, educator, researcher, and trainer, to name a few. Director Arturo Bayohot holds a doctorate degree in educational management and is a diplomate in applied linguistics from Simeo Regional Language Center, Singapore. He's a leader trainer graduate of Tuncheon City, South Korea, and is a 4B holder in scouting movement. He has already been spending more than 30 years of his career in the Department of Education as a former master teacher, teacher in charge, division English supervisor, assistant schools division superintendent to schools division superintendent, and as currently the regional director of DepEd Region 10. This year, DepEd Regional Office uh, Region 10 was awarded as champion or the most learning-focused regional office at the 2019-2020 Secretary's Award for Excellence in Curriculum and Instruction or the SAFE CI, which consequently made RD Art as the most outstanding regional director. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the regional director of DepEd Region 10, Northern Mindanao. Let's give a warm welcome to Director Arturo B. Bayokot. Good afternoon, our valued listeners. I also would like to give my pleasant afternoon to the Dep Ed Teachers team and to the Department of Education as a whole for having invited me this afternoon as the resource person to talk about a very important topic, which we call planning and implementing developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process for distance delivery modalities. This is a very important topic for our teachers to take note of. Because you remember, this is captured in our Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. Specifically, it is the fourth domain of PPST. And to emphasize the national adoption of the PPST, this was implemented in 2017 through Dep and Order number 42 series of 2017. This was before, of course, the onset of COVID-19 pandemic, wherein the idea of distance learning modalities was not probably considered and not relevant at the time when this was crafted. It can be said then that the distance learning seemed like a distance, a distant option or modality. But today, even after the pandemic, I'm very definite that distance learning is here to stay. And we could be revisiting our implementation of developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process for distance learning delivery modalities. With the pandemic, we don't know when this is going to, to last. And apparently, even if we go back to the comforts of our old normal, I would really believe that uh, distance education or delivering education remotely 
will really form as part of the regular options for us to deliver education. We have already enjoyed the wisdom of the distance learning delivery modalities, the gains that we have achieved, although there are also limitations that continue to confront us and we are learning from it. Well, our Department of Education Secretary is always emphasizing that education really has to continue uh, to restore normalcy among our learners' lives, whatever education emergencies will confront us. Like in the entire country, when, we, when the country and the world was hit by the pandemic, in the Department of Education, we prepare our basic education learning continuity plans in the different levels of governance. The central office, for example, has prepared the regional office, the division office, down to the school level. In Region 10, for example, we have crafted our uh, learning continuity plan named as RX Adobe or Region 10 Alternative Delivery of Basic Education. And of course, this was anchored on the department's Sulung Edukalidad. Remember that program, which is a pivot program from access to quality, which has the Kai pillars. You've, you've watched the video earlier on that was shown to you. And the, the four pillars are emphasized in the letters K-I-T-E that form the acronym KAI. And K stands for the K-12 curriculum. It has to really be relevant. So it has to be reviewed, revised, restructured in accordance to the peculiar needs of the time, especially at this pandemic. Letter I stands for improving learning environment. We continue to prepare the school learning environment of our children. And for now, the greater challenge is the students are studying from home and it has been emphasized that the parents should provide the learning space. And it is now our challenge to ensure that that learning space is really complementing or supporting the child's learning. And in one way or the other, as partner of the child's learning with parents, we really have to collaborate to ensure that there is really a conducive learning environment. Of course, letter T is very essential. And that is what we be, give so much investment at this year, because it's about capacitating our teachers to retrain them, upskill or reskill, especially so that you might have been in the depth and for a long time, but you have not tried even once in the history of your teaching that you were using a distance learning delivery modality. But now it has compelled us. We have not prepared for it, but we tried it. And apparently we are surviving. Remember, we are now at the fourth quarter, almost to end the school year, and we are surviving. And that was also because we invested on our teachers training since we started our classes on October 5 last year. And of course, the engagement of our stakeholders has to be enhanced. If we were supported last time, then it has to be all the more support. We, we expect them to be supporting us all the more at this time with the health crisis. In the Department of Education, remember that K, which is K to 12 curriculum, uh, it was at our curriculum guide to the tune of a big number like 14,171 learning competencies that a child has to learn from kindergarten to grade 12. That's too many. And I think that's not doable, especially with the limitations that the child will be learning at home or will be learning without the teacher at the side. So, well, as part of the process of our curriculum team, they tried to review and come up with a 10,000 plus essential learning competencies. But we, when, we're hit, when we were hit by the pandemic, we have to realize that it is too much for the students to really learn on their own so that they streamlined the competencies down to 5,689 and we call this the most essential learning competencies. These are the most enduring competencies that a child has to learn to be able to further his studies. But how do we do in terms of develop, sequencing developmentally our lessons? Well, it doesn't really only have to consider the ordering of activities in the teaching and learning to make sure that the learning is building up, up to the time that the child is able to learn the concept. But I, to me, prior to that, it is very important to remember the principle which says we should start where the learners are. That's why we conduct diagnostic assessments 
to measure where they are now so the teaching can take off where they are in and to ensure that the learners are ready for the competency that we want them to be to learn we have to take a look at the readiness in terms of prerequisites especially for english language math uh, science there are, these are subjects that are requiring so much of of uh, prerequisite competencies to be able to learn an enduring competency so that they really have to the teachers have to unpack or the teachers have to subdust to make sure that the students will be able to be ready before to, to learn the enduring competency. I remember when I was observing a class back then when I was a supervisor, and there was this teacher that was teaching ordering of adverbs in a series. It was an English grade five class. And then this teacher, after the teaching, was frustrated because students, half of the students did not learn the lesson based on the results of the formative test that she was giving. And so during my post-conference, I, I was observing that class. I asked the teacher, why do you think they're not able to order the adverbs in a series? Sir, because they probably had the difficulty of understanding what are the kinds of adverbs, that the frequency, the manner, the place, and the time. And so I said, so why did you teach immediately the ordering when they have not learned what adverbs are probably and what are the kinds of adverbs? And then the teacher said, sir, this our lesson, these are lessons of grades four and three back. And my lesson at grade five is really to order. But I said, even if you insist that you focus on the ordering because that's the competency of the level, but how could you succeed if the students are not ready because they probably have not learned the concepts of adverbs and the kinds of adverbs. So you really have to go back before they learn that ordering adverbs should really start with frequency manner, place, and time. So it is wrong to say, I will go to Manila, I will go tomorrow to Manila. Because in the order of adverbs, place should come first before time. And so you would say, I will go to Manila tomorrow. So that's just an example, meaning you have to unpack the competency. Uh, on screen, you're seeing my example, like summarizing the selection or the story in red. How do you let the student summarize the story? Of course, they understand that the summary is the shorter version of the original text. But of course, it's not just easy. Some of the students will just delete some paragraphs, delete some sentences to achieve that shorter version. But they do not understand already the important features of the story or the episodes once they put together because of the deletion that they were doing. And there is also a fact that it is not a summary when the writer is not using his own words. So again, as a teacher, I would really check on the prerequisites whether these are mastered by my learners. And one of that is making a topic outline. Do they really know how to do a topic outline? And knowing the outline is to really be able to also to master identifying the general thought of the story. Are they able to understand? This requires so much of comprehension. So they have to go back to understanding the general thought of the story, identifying the supporting details of each topic sentence and would probably start with identifying the key sentences of the paragraph. If these four prerequisites are mastered by the child, then I think he is ready for summarizing. That's what I mean of subtasking or unpacking. And this is again, sequencing the competencies according to the importance from simple to complex. And it, it, it means that this enduring competency of summarizing would really require the mastery of the prerequisites where I, which are basic. Okay. And well, we have to know that in there are factors to consider in terms of the teaching and learning process. No? We know that the major parts of a lesson when we were writing our plans before and even up to now, starts with objective, subject matter, procedure, and then this evaluation and even assignment. But again, looking at the procedure, there are many things that happened in this period. And this is where, where we should really arrange developmentally the activities to build up the students as he continues to learn and master the competency and probably be ready for the assessment. So it will probably start with a mood setting to make sure our students are ready for learning. And number two, we will have to activate the prior knowledge and do review of the past lesson, especially if the lesson yesterday 
has a connection with what we are teaching today and probably use that springboard to connect it with the current lesson. And this will also serve somehow as a motivation for our students to learning the new thing. And then following that is the presentation of the new lesson. And in the way we present, it's not just normally doing lecture, but the teacher is given the ample, uh, uh, the ample leeway to actually design the presentation through activities and then analyze the outputs of the activities and what were not uh, what were not learned by the students during the activity and in your analysis you can do some lecturettes in the abstraction or emphasizing on the concept of the lesson and try them to apply what they learn in that concept or in that generalization to ensure that they are learning before they will be subjected to the formative assessment. This is very important part of the teaching to ensure that they really are learning what's taught in the day. And we could even go to giving them take home tasks or assignments, which is, could be a follow through or an enrichment of what they have learned today, or it could be an, an assignment which is an introductory to the next lesson. Is this a possible in our remote learning? delivery. Yes, it is. Because by the way we develop the modules, we ensure that these things are already considered or subsumed. Or even in the conversion of the self-learning modules into TV and radio learning episodes, then we have to ensure that these are also built up in terms of developmentally sequencing the lessons to ensure that at the end of it, students are learning. So again, at this time, may I invite you to take a look at this slide, which is on spotting the difference. This is comparing two classroom settings, which one is labeled 1920 and the other one is 2021. Of course, uh, apart from the picture, which is the difference, I think very, very evident is the, the room structuring are there. But I think the very evident in terms of difference really is that in 1920, the, it is very obvious that the teacher there is present and the uh, students, which is really face-to-face uh, -face teaching and learning interaction between the students and the teacher. But apparently, if you look at classroom 2021, there are no children and the chairs are even with boxes probably that will contain the modules that are distributed and then retrieved and been checked by the students. And the teachers are the ones reporting to school every day. So looking at these two images of classroom in 1920 and 21, 2021, exactly 100 year, one years apart. Do you think there is much difference when it comes to physical setting? Yes, there is. What about the teachers and learners? All the more that there is a big difference. And what about the teaching and learning process? It really has a change and teachers are challenged how to manage the change. What keeps learners engaged 100 years ago against our learners who are learning at this time before the pandemic or even during the pandemic and even after the pandemic. One very important aspect is how to plan and implement developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process. Well, especially at this time for distance delivery modalities. Today, allow me to engage your thoughts as we share, analyze and reflect on our actions on planning and implementing developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process. Now let's take a look at these questions and think about the answers to these questions. Where are we now? So literally, you would probably answer me that we are already at the last week of quarter four to be able to finish school year 2020-2021. But it's not only at that level. Where are we now in terms of our satisfaction in delivering education remotely based on what are our children achieving? What have we achieved? If we realize that what we achieve is not enough, then how much farther do we need to go? If the current performance is only at this level, but the desired level of performance is higher than what they achieved, then let's look at the gap and how we should be able to close the gap between the current performance against the desired level of performance. And the problem now is how much more do we need to do to be able to close that gap? Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to look to take a look at this. Looking at the picture down below, this has been used in the earlier activity by 
July, and Anna. Looking at this picture, these are the primary goals of a teacher. When we teach, it is put in mind that our students should be able to learn from complex to difficult or even climb the ladder from the different levels of, of formal schooling as contained in our PQF or our Philippine qualification framework. And then a teacher imagines that learners climb up the ladder of education and eventually succeed. Regardless of learners' background, skills, and abilities, the teacher is out to nurture effective teaching and learning process in the classrooms. And despite the pandemic, the distance learning modalities we are currently implementing, teachers are able to ensure that learners step into developmental stages in learning, which is the result of developmentally fashioned teaching episodes. This crucial task of fostering developmentally sequenced teaching and learning encourages teachers to be mindful of effective instructional planning, which also includes successfully managing and implementing lessons. If you look at the slide, going back to DEPED order number 42, as I was mentioning this earlier, dated uh, oh, oh, a series of 2017, this articulates the PPST, and it is explicitly stated in domain four to plan, manage, and implement developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process to meet curriculum requirements through various teaching contexts. With the distance learning modalities we are implementing, we should be able to identify concepts in planning and managing developmentally sequenced teaching and learning processes, following curriculum requirements and anchoring these processes on various teaching contexts. For example, on the slide, if you are a teacher to work on strand 4.1, under the beginning teachers, this is what you, are, you should be able to achieve as far as 4.1 is concerned. But if you are at the level of a proficient teacher because you have improved your key ASAs or your knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values, then you should be able to demonstrate what is articulated in the third column to label that you are a proficient leader, teacher. And you don't contend on that because being proficient is still not the peak or not the ultimate goal. There is really have, there is to invest more to become a highly proficient until you become distinguished. Now, the, to better understand and help you clearly realize your role as an effective planner, manager, and implementer of developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process, at domain four of the PPST, we need to understand once more the definition of what developmentally sequenced teaching and learning processes. This keeps learners engaged in the content and purposely scaffolds learners towards achieving the lesson objectives by, of course, maximizing the class time allotted. And where are we now? What have we achieved? And how far do we go from here in achieving developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process. I coined the term essentials. Hence, these are vital to achieving developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process. And if you look at essential one, this is something to do with self-reflection. It emphasizes the significance of self-reflection. This is also elucidated in the PPST. Teachers need to ponder on their knowledge, skills, and attitudes and relate them to the development of sequence teaching and learning process. What they know, do, and feel matter a lot in developing the lessons. You cannot give what you have, as we, we commonly say. Uh, we cannot really expect something where we are not actually proficient about. So again, that's really a very important consideration for a teacher. Do they have the competence and basic knowledge? Do our teachers have the capacity? Where were they prepared for this? Were the attitudes aligned to the lesson development during the pandemic? Or maybe what they know or their, your, their orientation was limited before the pandemic. All of those and more should be included in our self-reflection as teachers. Second essential is it emphasizes the importance of the support group. Well, DEPID is a people organization. In the school, you have lots of teachers. There are principals heading, supervising our teachers. There are stakeholders from the outside that also support 
the teaching and learning, whether immediate or not immediate. This is also manifested. This, this support system is also manifested in our lack sessions. Remember, in our lack sessions, we share our problems. We also try to help each other to be able to find the solutions to the problems. Because if I don't know the solution, the others might have. And in the platform of lack session, we shall be able to thresh them out, share, and benchmark from it. It is best to discuss with fellow teachers, school leads, and other instructional coaches the different issues, especially on approaches and strategies in lesson delivery. Consideration should always be given to the new normal conditions, wherein a lot of factors should be considered. In discussing with the support group, it is also best to keep a log in the form of journals. We really have to keep a record on what are we discussing about. Look closely what the teacher writes down in his personal notebook and evaluate, evaluate the teacher uh, for his plan on developmentally sequenced teaching and learning processes for the lesson and discuss other viable options in different distance learning delivery modalities. Because apparently there's so much option to consider and let's try to check what are the strengths and the limitations of each modality and try to, con to contextualize it where one fits to the kind of learners you treat or you deal with. The exercises given in the SLMs or self-learning modules and other available materials, teachers should not be treated as the only means and source. Let us be open to ideas and suggestions. We can even rely on our beliefs, opinions, and instinct. Because apparently, even if these are suggestives at the CEO that, that actually manages the SLM development, let us remember, you should remember that you know your children better than anyone else. So you really just have to do some adaptations on what SLMs were given to you to ensure that they are contextualized to the kind of learners you have. Essential three stress the importance of the plans indicated in the teacher's journal and the execution of these plans. It further explores what went well and even those things that did not do well to further improve the lesson, especially for distance learning delivery modalities. You can probably look at the answers to this question. What can you say about the teacher's practice of keeping a notebook containing his plans for the day's lesson? Do you think it is helpful in planning lessons for distance delivery modalities? Of course, because what you have scribbled in your notes are very essential inputs when you design or plan for your learning, for your teaching and learning plan. Are the plans written down logically sequenced? If yes, provide your evidence. That's very important. The logical sequencing. We just do not provide an activity in a teaching, learning, and process for the sake of an activity. Others are doing it because they just want to show that there was cooperation or interaction among learners. But what kind of cooperation interaction they're giving in the activity? Is that complementing or leading to the learning of the new lesson? And the teacher should be able to answer that. Yes. So you have to carefully consider your activities that should build up the learning to better understand the current lesson uh, studied. No? And then if you are the teacher, what items will you remove or improve? And you just have to justify your answers. No? So friends, let's take a look at this. Let us examine an excerpt from an actual daily lesson log, the LL, very famous. I want you to think of answers to questions posted in the succeeding slide that I will be flashing in a while. And by the way, let us not forget that each part of the DLL is an important aspect in achieving developmentally sequenced teaching learning process. Hence, this should be carefully reviewed and revisited. There is a need to harmonize the DLL. If this could still be used for the coming school year or do some adaptations with the present modalities we are implementing and the competencies we are imparting. This one's a sample of the weekly home learning plan you're doing to guide you, to guide the learner and the parent that, that assists in the new normal. This was part of the attachment of department memorandum under uh, the Office of Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, number 2020-307. The suggested measures to foster academic ease 
during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is from the office of USEC Honorable Diosdado San Antonio. And how do we develop sequence teaching learning process from it? With the varied learning tasks provided for the different learning competencies, teachers and school heads need to think of creative and innovative ways in implementing developmentally sequenced teaching learning process. The self-monitoring tool, which is filled out by the learners, parents, and teachers, serves as one good instrument in triangulating data. Remember, we're not just dependent on the output of the child. Maybe the feedback of parents as they come to our school to pick up the modules and we talk to them and uh, ask them what's the development. And you, checking the outputs, you make deeper reflections in terms of the outputs. If it's really failing, then what should you do? And of course, uh, it should be highly suggested and recommended by the school heads, those that are contained in the department memorandum 2020-307. But again, it is not really casted in stone that you have to follow that in total. You have to do some adaptations to ensure that Sorry. To ensure that you are incorporating the inputs that you see within the context of your teaching and learning environment. If you look at the suggestions for improvement, aside from the essentials given, which include self-reflection, if you remember, the practice of consistently planning lessons by keeping journals and having a support group, I mentioned these three Having a plan is also a good way to strengthen instructional planning. But basically, it does not end with writing the plans. Writing the plan is not the ultimate end. Of course, execute the plan. Checking if the plans are appropriate for our aim. To plan for developmentally sequenced lessons includes the following suggestion. First is scaffolding. I presume you would agree with me that scaffolding is one component to enhance the development of developmentally sequenced lessons. I remember July Abrera answered this a while ago regarding the, the wisdom of scaffolding. And this refers to a variety of instructional strategies used to guide or support learners progressively toward better understanding and greater independence in the learning process. Contextualization is also important. I've been saying this even in the, uh, at, uh, in the earlier discussion, that you have to factor in what are the features of the, your local context. Contextualization in its whole essence has a lot to offer in planning and implementing developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process. Take a look at the kinds of learners you have, the kind of parent support you, that the students are getting, the kind of, of materials you have, whether sufficient or insufficient, and I would like to specify as an example, the SLM, which are current SLMs, which are currently used in the distance learning delivery modality. This is uh, apparently the prominent learning delivery modality uh, that is used in the, in the deaf ed schools. No? Some, if not most of these SLMs were designed for face-to-face -face learning. Even if, well, the development of this were written trying hard to put in the head of the writer that it has to be a distance learning delivery modality. But it's just about uh, speculations or assumptions because the delivery of distance learning was still not done in the past, which could have been a backup of the writer or the SLM developer in writing, where in probably interactions of learners to these materials are not probably fully substantiated because of the inadequacy in terms of background. Contextualization is one suggestion worth considering. I already said that, that you know better your students uh, compared to, to others. So you really have to consider your instinct. And then the objective of the lesson is still the primordial concern if we wanted to enhance developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process. Of course, very important because the objective and the accomplishment of the objective will give you the satisfaction that you are achieving and succeeding in your teaching and learning, whether face-to-face -face or distance learning. 
As we all know, the objective is linked to planning, effective and authentic types of assessment. Assessment is very important because it will gauge to how much students are learning from today in our lesson. So the assessment can even happen not just at the end of the teaching learning. It could happen any part in any part of the lesson because assessment can come out in any form. But are these possible in our distance learning delivery modalities? It is possible, especially for online, the, the synchronous online teaching and learning where interaction is real time, then the student can ask, the teacher can interact and the teacher can guide. So if there's Q&A at the beginning part of the teaching and learning to clarify when that is part of progress, pro progress monitoring, a uh, progress assessment. No? An assessment can be not just a paper pencil. It could be a performance assessment, or if you would like to check on the, on the outputs that are kept on records, which we call uh, portfolio assessment, we can do that. So there's a lot. Well, in face-to-face, -face, there's a lot of options. In distance learning delivery modalities, we do not run short of options. There are also options, but it takes so much resourcefulness and creativity of the teacher to be able to do that. Look at this illustration of practice. Procedures are modified, calibrated to encompass a more engaging and progressive series of learning activities. We adhere to the developmental nature of the daily lesson lab or the weekly home learning plan template, which starts in reviewing previous lessons. I already said that in the basic parts of a lesson plan that starts with objective, subject matter, procedure. And then of course the procedure considers the review of the past lessons. And then even up to going to evaluation of learning and provision for additional activities in the form of performance tasks. We basically track how a lesson is delivered in a regular lesson plan. However, we have to remember that following the illustration of practice is again suggestive in nature. Still the teacher is the one who will design for developmentally sequenced lessons applicable to his or her learners, especially this time of remote delivered teaching and learning. Ladies and gentlemen, you are given so much liberty so much uh, room to create, recreate, revise, or uh, make adaptations to suit and tailor fit your teaching to the kind of students you are, the, to the kind of students who are learning. And of course, the modality brought about by the, by the crisis that we continue to face at this time. Look, look at this. Now, uh, this is about uh, for a developmentally sequenced teaching and learning processes, we start with the review of the le previous lesson to activate the learner's schema or prior knowledge. I have overemphasized that. And in this DLL, the review taps uh, on the life story of an inspirational speaker who also survived challenges brought about by his physical condition. In this review, it will help the learners begin with combining their prior knowledge to the new knowledge they will be developing from the main lesson. And again, helping learners establish the purpose of the lesson could be a form of motivation. A motivation may be a creative activity, it could be a song, a game, uh, a simulation activity, or any form that could help engage learners to the new lesson. And this will now test in terms of your, your repertoire, what kind of motivational activities you have been doing and you have been filing. It gives ideas or clues on what to expect with the new lesson, thereby touching on its purpose. The use of the song, for example, the song Reflection, is a motivation or a way to establish the purpose of the text the learners will be dealing with. And the text relates to the message of the song which centers on discrimination. Well, you have to consider the fitness of the selection or the piece that you will be using, and especially if it has a connection with what you are supposed to teach. That's a, a correct choice. But if you cannot find anything that's related to the new lesson, you could just use a song as a motivational activity in terms of preparing them, in terms of readiness 
for, for your instruction. Again, is this done remotely? Well, in our TV and radio learning episodes, these really are factored in. These are also factored in, in the SLM. But the execution or acting them out is really the equity of the student to do it and probably the parent to guide because apparently the teacher is not there to really manage and facilitate the motivational activity actions to take place. Now, let's look at this. I'm almost done, don't worry. I know we are eating so much time. We've started at 10, 14, uh, 2, 14. This part of the procedure touches on the accomplishment of the learners during reading activities in terms of letter discussing new concepts and practicing new skills and developing mastery. This is in connection with pre-reading activity, which will collect learners' anticipations about the text. Very important. Uh, I remember when I was a teacher, before we will be reading the text, I will engage first my elementary learners on the photos, on the pictures, page to page to page. And then we'll talk only about the pictures without looking at the text and create our own stories. And once they will be at their actual reading, they will try to check what they have thought of or what the class discussed really is what the story is all about. And that gives so much excitement for the reader, for the learner to know once they are in the actual reading. The teacher could incorporate collaborative activities in the process of actually reading the text. Sustained silent reading where learners read the text silently together. And this is also highlighted in the lesson procedure. On one hand, after reading the text, the next activity could be one that will activate the new knowledge. The learners have developed out of reading the main text. In this case, the teacher may ask a series of questions in relation to the text or the featured narrative. This underscores the formative assessment that teachers need to provide to confirm how well the learners have got, understood the text, page after page after page. So they really do not have to wait for the last part of the lesson and do the test, which is, well, the usual is the paper and pencil. No? Especially if the teacher realized that there is no more time to conduct a paper pencil test, then he has to make sure that along the discussion of the story being read, he was able to shoot a lot of questions that will check on comprehension. And that could already form or, or represent the formative assessment. It allows for important instructional decisions like reteaching the concept or moving forward to the next activities as based on the assessment results that you analyze. Uh, we also have this, after making sense of the text through the reading activities or post-reading activities have to be dealt with, they include applying what they learn from the text to practical means of real life scenarios. It's really a challenge how a teacher should be able to facilitate students' insights gained in the classroom or at a distance learning modality, connect it to real life scenarios real life situations. Because once this is connected to the real life routine of the child, then the learning is even given opportunity to be mastered and will form part of the body system of the child. This makes learning new knowledge more relatable and meaningful when it doesn't really have a connection with what, how the child learns, how the child lives, then sometimes it is meaningless to the child. Generalizations and abstractions of learning also count on post-reading activities because the learners need to encapsulate what they have produced out of the reading text, out of reading the text. No? For this particular lesson, the learners will be listing the acts of heroism and struggles of the character found in the text, which aligns with the concept of battling out discrimination in terms of this story entitled The Hero in Me. And realizations about these details are also expected from the learners. Evaluating learning outcomes is the last step towards planning for developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process. It comes with either a paper and pencil or a performance-based activity that will gauge where the learners are in terms of the competencies they need to master. This lesson features a 
performance-based evaluation of students' learning, which has to be coupled with a rubric. Rubric is not just about for evaluation. Rubric has to be communicated to the students before they perform something because it is a guide for the students in terms of performing. Example, if I join in a singing competition, I should know what are the criteria. It's not just the, the criteria are not just for the judges. It has to be given to the performers to be able to know how much percent is given for showmanship so that I will really make sure I will have a good projection, body projection on stage. But in terms of voice quality, how much value is being put in the criteria? In terms of audience impact, you know, as a performer, you have to know the criteria. And in this teaching and learning, the rubric has to be communicated to the students prior to the accomplishment of the task so that they should know where to do more, where to do less. And the teacher could also give other options in evaluating learning outcomes with consideration on the learners, multiple intelligence and context. Remember Howard Gardner's multiple intelligence theory that considers eight kinds of intelligences, which are very essential in terms of knowing the child's learning style. Let's take a look at this. Now, sorry. It is also crucial for the teacher to extend any learning encounter in the classroom via the classroom beyond it. No? Follow-up activities or homework may be given to strengthen new knowledge acquired by the learners to remediate or further lead them towards better understanding of the lesson for the day or week. I was already explaining earlier the intentions of giving assignment. It could be a follow-up of what has learned during the day or an opportunity to enhance when the student is not able to really get it in full or probably if the students are able to understand based on your assessment, you could have given an assessment or uh, an assignment that will introduce the next lesson. So it's an advanced study sort of that. And let's take a look at this. Now, the big question is, with the different distance delivery modalities we have implemented, and I guess we will continue to implement, planning and implementing for developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process is a prime consideration we need to see from all angles and perspectives. For modular distance learning, our, our writers or module developers should consider the sequencing of activities to build up that should complement with one another for at the end of it, the intention is for the child to learn the concept. Online distance learning, well, that's very good. Whether synchronous or asynchronous, uh, there is interaction. I am really very happy if we could create more classes on distance learning, but apparently uh, in Region 10, for example, we have an enrollment of 1.2 million this year, but only 49,000 students are going online for obvious reasons, especially on the demands of gadgets, the subscription, of course, the signals. Television and radio-based instruction, very good, because when you create or develop your learning episodes for TV and radio instruction, you have to consider the sequencing of your teaching and learning processes to ensure that students learn at the end of it. If you look at the delivery modalities that we still in, embark on, the synchronous learning, uh, real time, asynchronous, in the comfort of the time of the students, and especially if, if two students, uh, two brothers are using one laptop so they take turns and they should really, as they share the laptop, then they have to, to be in the asynchronous learning. By chronos learning is also very important, uh, is, uh, which is a combination of, of synchronous and asynchronous. Okay, regardless of the distance learning types, teachers, facilitators, or parateachers should consider how to monitor the learner's progress. I think that's really the greater challenge of us right now. How to monitor the progress of our learners and how to do that. How to provide learning feedback when they are at home. Yeah, using cell phones, we can easily say that, but sometimes it's easily said and done regarding the insufficiencies of the logistical requirements to be able to do it. You know? 
and then be available for consultation or conference. Well, our teachers are our sandigan, so we really have to also make sure that they support us. If you look at this, the following, the, this table is just an illustrative example of the types of distance learning, when to use it and the requirements. So sample, let's go to modular distance learning. What do we need? The SLM could be printed or digital formats. And then the accessibility could be at the DepEd portal, DepEd Commons, or the ones that are reproduced by the schools or divisions or regions and distribute them. When to use it? Well, the community quarantine classification also has implications on the use of it. You know that, whether it's ECQ or modified ECQ, GCQ or modified GCQ. And then the requirements, the printed SLM, digitized internet connectivity gadgets. Online distance learning, for example, digital form, DepEd portal, DepEd commons, or areas and all that. And for TV, you, these are the requirements and the printed SLM internet connectivity or gadgets. Very important that even in TV and radio-based instruction, students could have been given the script of the teachers teaching on TV and radio as the student will be guided on where you are now in your discussion. It's really a good backup because apparently our students really are visual and audio learners. If you look at this, um, the distance learning options has the following characteristics and features, which continue to evolve as we progress in its implementation. So interaction and assistance through synchronous and asynchronous learning platform, uh, offline online curriculum, whether you're using learning management platform like Modo, Canvas, or Adobe, printed modules and learning activity sheets for learners to work at home, streamlining of schedule for TV and radio-based instruction, and the SLMs, for parents with reference to self-monitoring tool. And then what should we put in place consistently? Communication. The creation of learning directory, which contains the school heads, teachers, division personnel for emergency contact details, DepEd and non-DepEd email addresses, workplace and Facebook accounts. As what I have said, we are just doing it for the first time. We need so much support. And only when our communications open that can we act, that we can really access the options in terms of rescuing your critical situation that you're in. Establish region wide workplace platform as the preferred mode of communication in terms of deputy announcements, learning materials, handouts. Uh, and I think this is really maximally done by organization. Work uh, messenger group chat room and all that. And and enhancing learning activities, we have to enhance learning activities, the following to be conducted, no? review learning activities, quizzes, assignments, I've said so much about this. And then you devise a backup plan in case another disruption will affect the adjusted school year. I think we are far better ready, right, this school year coming up 21, 22 than of last year. Because whatever happens, we had the modules of the past school year. And I hope they were also being used with the purpose of being able to reuse them for the succeeding years. No? And then provide a list of learners, learners activities that are feasible in all contexts to make sure you update whether some of your learners are capable to learning online, whether synchronous or asynchronous. What are the ways forward in our assessment? Well, this is done, but uh, apparently not all are able to do it individually because that also depend, that's also dependent on the expertise of the teacher, especially on technology use. Develop software that will provide online exams. Uh, some of our regions, divisions, schools are doing it creatively, even without the instruction of, of the central office, because we know that assessment is a non-negotiable part of the entire teaching and learning. It is only in this that we should know whether students are learning or not. Online offline conduct of contextualized tests or even provide tutorial videos for teachers on how to make virtual learning assessments. And then on learners assessment following were implemented like the online platforms, YouTube, Facebook. Now I don't really need to discuss this because apparently these are what, where we are hooked on in terms of learning and our teachers as well as learning 
these platforms, the way they learn and the way they deliver education to their students. No? And um, I believe that in planning and implementing developmentally sequenced teaching and learning for distance learning modalities should be everybody's business. I've been saying this, that education is everybody's business. Uh, that it is not just a business of deaf ed schools. Everybody, whether you are from the media or from the LGU, you have sons and daughters which are also into our schools, into our school system. That's why we have to put our energies and resources together to be able to provide best for our students, for them to also learn best. As the famous African proverb states that it takes a village to educate a child. And with or without the pandemic, whatever modalities we are implementing, everybody should do his share in achieving this goal. After all, we are not only a group who works together, but a team who continues to believe and trust each other as we passionately work with a heart. And remember, when you invest in education, you can never go wrong. And if you collaborate with each one, I would say, that nobody can beat the product of collaboration. When DEPED delivers, DEPED serves. This has been your resource person, Dr. Arturo Bayokot, the Regional Director of DEPED Region 10, saying thank you for your indulgence and thank you for learning with me this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Director Arturo Bayokot, for a very insightful, comprehensive, and informative presentation. We have learned the essentials to achieving developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process for distance delivery modalities, as well as the viable suggested improvements for the different parts of the teaching and learning process by showing clear illustrations of practice. Again, huge thank you, Director Art, for joining us today live. For our Welcome viewers, to... just like just keep on sharing your insights here in the teachers' comment section. And more so, you can post as well in your social media accounts, like your Facebook personal page and Twitter account. Don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag I support DepEd teachers, and hashtag Deped Teachers Episode 27. Once again, thank you so much, Director Bayokot. We learned so much from your presentation. So just be reminders to all our loyal viewers who've been watching all throughout all our episodes. A gentle reminder not to forget to register. You can see the link on the screen. So your one-time registration for the theme, Instructional Planning, Delivery, and Assessment is good for Episodes 25 to 30. So we're halfway through it, and we will give the evaluation on the 30th. Once again, don't forget to like, follow, and share the Petitia's Facebook page. Again, we wish that this episode has provided you, dear teachers, great insights to be applied in your own teaching practice. On behalf of the curriculum and instruction strand, we thank you so much for your generously spending your time with us. Remember, big changes start with small steps. And taking small steps by showing constant support to DepEd teachers will help you to keep you on track of professional growth and development. For here in DepEd teachers, our mission is empowering teachers, enabling learners. A blessed afternoon, everyone.